Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back, Diana Bahasa. We're excited to have her here as a speaker, an author, a life coach. And of course, the company is Savor Life with Diana, based out of beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii. She's helping so many ambitious uh, leaders out there uh, dealing with burnout, dealing with their business to help you with more success, your health, your happiness, energy healing, retreats. I mean, there's a lot this lady does. And let me just welcome her back today. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, Jill. It's really great great to be here with you today. Yes, and good morning to you because I know it's 8 a.m. there in in Honolulu. It's 2 p.m. here in New York. So, ah, God bless you. Amazing to wake up. It must be to see those beautiful sunsets and, of course, the sunrise and the beach. Tell me it's not like perfect to live where you live. It, I, I do feel grateful to wake up every morning, but no matter where you live, there are there are challenges and there are difficulties and, you know, it's not like you can move to Hawaii and all your problems run away, Got it. Um, but it is absolutely that you can begin to cultivate the mindset of being grateful where you are. And the more that there is plenty to be grateful for here. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Pleasure to have you back. And for new time uh, listeners and viewers today, would you mind just telling us a little bit about yourself and what it is you do before we get into today's topics? Absolutely. Um, So I'm a life coach. I'm a speaker. I'm an author. I do energy healing work as well, all of which I never, ever imagined I would do. Um, You know, I started out my career on Wall Street working in debt capital markets and, you know, during the global financial crisis, decided to make a complete 180, which seemed uncharacteristic. But after surviving 9-11, I was, you know, really in a place where I realized, you know, like life is short. I should I should do what I want with my life. So I actually became a chef. I worked in San Francisco, New York, I had the opportunity to cook for President Obama, cook behind the scenes um, for the Mets when they were in the World Series. It's been an extraordinary experience. Um But uh, that actually led me to get really burned out. So I was following my passion, doing what I absolutely loved, but pushed myself too far uh, to the point that I actually developed chronic pain and illness, autoimmune disease from head to toe. And that made me realize, you know, like I I wanted to reach the next level of success, but I didn't want to sacrifice my health, my happiness, my relationships. Um, it brought me greater understanding of my quality of life and how valuable that was. And that's why I help people today with um, with burnout, with overcoming PTSD, adversity, whatever it is that we may face. I believe that we can turn those most bitter moments of life uh, into something what I call dreamy delicious when we know how to balance that um, that sourness, the saltiness with sweetness and richness. Beautiful. Well, we are excited to have you back and tell us how we can reach out to you. Absolutely. So you can find me on my website, saverlifewithdiana.com or uh, on social media. My handle is saverlifewithdiana. That's S-A-V-O-R-L-I-F-E with Diana. Perfect. And I know we'll touch upon, uh, again, you know, some of the the work you're doing as far as the retreats, uh, the journal, and uh, of course, all that. But for now, I want to get started to talk a little bit about um, breaking the silence in a sense, which is really addressing the societal stigma around and surrounding mental health. Would you like to add to that? Yeah, Um I wasn't sure how I wanted to broach this topic because I want to talk about a time where I felt suicidal. And I think that, you know, trigger warning, I guess, right? Yeah. (laughs) Um, I don't want to get into the details of that, but I want to talk about what it, what it's like to feel that way, the hole that we feel like when we're, we're in that space. And then how it is that we can really get out of there. Because I think, you know, when when we get to that place, mm-hmm. a lot of times we feel so lonely. We feel, um, we feel like nobody can help us. We feel like there's nobody there. Um, we feel like nobody understands us. And so I, I want to talk about a little bit of that societal stigma, right? Like, like social media, all these things, there's so much pressure for us to appear joyful, for life to look perfect, right? Like that that's what we post on social media. We don't post this stuff that looks tough, right? Um, we don't we don't post, you know, our fears or those sort of things. Um, 
And because it can look when we're scrolling through our feeds, like everybody's life is perfect. Yeah. Um, it can feel all the more this isolation or like nobody understands us. Um, I will tell you on my social media, I actually post a lot of the ugly stuff on purpose because I don't want to, um, I don't want to lie about it. So even as I was walking through this journey after feeling suicidal and still not sh being sure if I wanted to live uh, while I was pregnant, um, I, I shared that on social media, you know, not, not the details because I didn't think it was appropriate, but I, I shared my sadness. I shared, you know, the, the tears and the not wanting to wake up and the, the not knowing how I was going to make it through. Um, mm. And I continue to do that today uh, <laughs> because I, I think that it's so important to be honest, to be real about what it is that we're going through. That's how people don't feel alone. You know, when we, when we, um, allow other people to feel understood, right? By by going out there and and being truthful about who it is we are, what it is we're going through, and you know, again, I think in the age of social media, there is this per this desire to portray a, per a specific persona or a specific energy, and honestly, I think I think that um, it it exacerbates that desire to Absolutely. look perfect. Absolutely. And I just have to mention something I saw on my feed this morning, which I didn't dive into, but it was an article in the New York Post. So I'm sure it's a, a, an international article, but um, about how they're doing, uh, they're, they're trying to pass a bill. It's like a surgeon general warning, like we did with tobacco and cigarettes for social media, just because of what you're saying, because they're talking about the mental angst, uh, the anguish, the anxiety, how it all increases for people. So they want to pass some type of bill right now because they realize that our youth is spending more than, I think, three hours a day. Again, I didn't read the whole article. I perused it, but I would love for you to take a look at it later because it is so true because this day and age and for now the government and they're trying to pass bills on this. It exists, this anxiety, this unnecessary, this feeling of not being as valuable, as beautiful as for social media. It's it's hurting so many people. And I know that for sure through my nieces, nephews in, in high school right now, there's these expectations where I need these lips and I have to look like this. And I'm like, but this isn't realistic. But so thank you for bringing this up. It's a really great topic that is affecting everyone, I believe here, everyone around the world. Yes. Yeah. And um, I'm glad that you brought up children because I think that they're growing up in a world where they never saw anything else. You know, you and I, we grew up in a world where we we have an understanding that it's yeah. fake, even though it is very sometimes, I mean, especially with AI, right? It can look so realistic. Like, like wow, is that real? Right? Like it fools, uh, it fools, it fools full-blown adults. It fools yeah. people who know better. So when we're talking about young, impressionable people like our children, you know, like really thinking about how is it, how is it that this is affecting them? And, you know, and I, and that's also more of the reason as well, why I'm like, I'm going to show the ugly stuff. I'm going to show the imperfection. I'm going to show when it's hard, um, you know, and I've had people um, before comment, like, like, you know, this is, this is sad. This is like, you know, this is dragging me down. And I'm like, Hey, then this isn't for you. Like if you, yeah. if you can't understand that sadness exists alongside happiness, right? That grief lit grief is simply another part of love. As long as you want to show only half the picture, yeah. like that's okay for you, but that's not real for me. Um, and so I, I make it a point to speak about my grief, um, navigating divorce. I speak, I speak about my, um, you know, just the challenges that I go through, the times that I feel lonely, the the anger that I feel, because I think that, you know, there there is too much of the filtered life. And yeah. I think that more and more, my hope is that the next generation will be looking for more of that unfiltered truth. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing this. And uh, just to remind everyone, um, uh, we are talking here um, with our friend, our author, our coach, and so much more. She's a master life coach, actually, helping bold businesswomen, she says, break the burnout cycle to uh, really 
build their dreams. And as an international speaker and author of Manifest Your Dreams, co-founder of Body Positivity Podcast, uh, she's here, you know, talking to us today in particular about uh, mental wellness, um, mental uh, wellness and your health. So breaking the silence, showing weakness, we're going to get into next a real, um, you know, or is it real strength? We'll talk about that too. But again, save her life with Diana. So let's continue here. And yeah, talk about embracing that vulnerability to really help us connect more deeply, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Um, so it's really interesting. Um, when I, when I was in this place most recently of, of feeling, um, suicidal, having those sort of thoughts, right. Um, it does, it it does again, feel very lonely. And one of the things that I found was really important was not telling everybody, right. So I'd talk about it more, more widely on social media, but where I started was, I don't, I'm not advocating to people like, you know, put all your stuff out there. There can be a vulnerability hangover, but what it, what does matter is finding some people who can understand, finding some people who can just listen, right? So many times when somebody displays what we think looks like weakness, we almost want to save them. We want to like protect them or like, you know, take what they said that's that's um, hard and like put this positive spin on it immediately yeah. instead of allowing for them and allowing ourselves to just sit for a moment in the discomfort, yeah. in the in the pain, in, um, in, in what doesn't feel good, in like what I call um, sometimes like our life's rotten ingredients right? Um, like we want to hide them in the back of the fridge or we want to throw them out. We want to, know, we want to like treat them like they, they don't exist. Um, and, and I don't think that that's really that smart because everybody has some, something funky in the back of their fridge. Everybody has something that's, you know, like on the brink of expiration or a little stinky back there. And so when we present this like perfect fridge, right. Or this perfect life to other people. Yeah you know, we, we're we not connecting, we're, we're showing people this facade. And I think it leads to this place where like, we were talking about, like, you know, here is social media, this tool that is here to help us connect more widely, um, but isn't allowing us to connect deeply. So I think, you know, not and again, I'm not saying put all your stuff out on social media, but I am yeah. saying find people who you, you can connect that way with real people who can understand you, who don't just try to, um, yep. to like, you know, put a Band-Aid on that bullet hole for you. Um, for a long time, I realized that I had been doing that, you know, just um, portraying this image of strength. There were so many people yep. who knew me strong, you know, who knew me as a person who could overcome anything. And when I was in this place where I had been feeling suicidal, decided I would become a single mom, I, um, I remember telling my siblings, you know, like they had always, I'm the, I'm the eldest of three. Um, I had, they'd always seen me as strong. They knew me as like Diana, like the girl who could get through anything, overcome whatever, like always strong, push through, like, you know, to them, I did live on this pedestal in a way. I, I lived in this way where, um, they, they saw me as untouchable and it was the very first time and this was a very conscious choice, by the way, uh, I'll talk about that a little bit more later, but where I told them, I was like, I'm terrified. I don't know how to be a single mom. I don't know how to do these things. I don't, um, I'm, you know, and even um, my um, my mother-in-law at the time, you know, telling her like, hey, I'm I'm struggling with these suicidal thoughts. I, I, I feel this way, you know, like, um, it was something that I didn't want to broadcast, but I realized that I had to reach out for more connection and to and to tell people what I was going through. Like I didn't I didn't want to tell my mom um, at the time that all this was unfolding because she was she was on a trip in the Philippines with my dad, and I was like I don't want to ruin their vacation with like with what I was going through. But you know, um, being in the early stages of pregnancy, carrying my daughter, I realized like if my daughter was going through this wouldn't matter where in the world I was, I would want her to tell me what was going on. I'd want to be there for her. And so I decided to tell her, you know, and um, 
doing this, right? Like, like showing the weakness, showing the fear, what it did was it transformed my relationships. Um, it allowed me to have deeper connections with my siblings. Like it, the way that it, this whole journey has transformed my family has been so, so profound. Um, we're here for each other more, like, like physically, emotionally, mentally, like the depth of our conversations has changed. So it's really allowed us to build this more meaningful connection. And, um, and it's also, I think, even allowed my siblings and, and others who know me um, to feel inspired to know that they're not alone and almost to look at it like, like wow, like if if somebody who they, they saw is so strong could come from this place of weakness and still ultimately like survive, you know, like it, I think it gives them and it's the feedback that I've received even from other friends who've been through uh, their own trials is, they were like, hey, if if Diana can do that, you know, if, if Diana can feel that way and like they knew how I was feeling in the moment, you know, one of my one of my dear friends, um, Arliss, who actually um, let, let me stay with her when I was like in the midst of all these things. So I left the island, you know, and wow. all that kind of stuff because I realized how bad my mental health was. And, you know, I was I was like a shell of oh a my person, gosh. Like, yeah. me, you know, in this she and her husband um, and you know, they kept me in this cocoon and like protected me when I was, you know, I, I couldn't eat. I, I like barely wanted to sleep. I just was crying all day, you know, and I, I was just in this place of extreme grief. Um, and like they, they saw me in that space and then they saw me continue to get up. And sometimes, you know, like we feel so weak in that moment. But the truth is like what we're actually doing is demonstrating this ex this profound strength mm -hmm. and power yeah. within my goodness. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it led to all forms of unexpected support, uh, healing, like, like transformed my family in ways where we're all so much closer than I ever expected. It's, it's healed my relationship in some ways with my mom, with my dad, like with my siblings, like beautiful. Uh, so yeah. That and I can tell if you can see yeah. her, if you're hearing her, I mean, She's here to help. She's been through it. You can, she can really empathize. And what, what gets me is that you had that second chance. You were able to transform that pain into purpose. Yeah. And if for someone listening today who may feel that there is no hope, there is no purpose, think again, there is, you have to try. And I got goosebumps hearing your story again. And, you know, because you were so grateful to be here after all you went through. And I know there's so many people out there feeling this is it, you know, and we need to help change and transform their mindset that they are valued. They are loved. You have a purpose here and you need to stay here and live your best life and heal and, and with your friends, your family and make these connections because life is so uh, valuable. And I just hate to see people's lives cut short, you know, because of the mental health and, you know, they're not getting the help they need. So thank you for this again, Diana, for sharing it all. Um, would you mind talking a little more now about transforming that uh, pain into purpose? Like really, you know, you mentioned talking and seeking your darkest moments out there. Yeah. Um, I want to say that I think it was very important for me to feel the pain. I think so often it's easier for us to bury it deep inside, to brush it aside, to act like what we're going through doesn't affect us, to get caught up in busyness yeah. of life as opposed to really taking a break and allowing ourselves to feel what it is that we're feeling. But like I was saying, you know, that that extreme grief is simply another side of real love that, you know, that, that pain is really, really just another side of growth. Right. Like so when when we're unwilling to embrace the whole of it, right, when we just want to go yep. right to that, mm -hmm. that transformation, right, like we, we first need to allow ourselves to release a little bit of that bitterness, right, the, the sadness, the anger, the grief, the the despair that we're feeling, we need to, we need to give it a voice. We need to let it out. One of the things that I, I think of all the time um, and that I share with other people when, when they talk to me is, you know, um, pain or grief or sadness shared is that same exact emotion halved, right? So when we, when we share that burden, the burden becomes halved, but when we share the positive, when we share the joy and the laughter and the strength and all that, yeah. 
it actually becomes multiplied. Ah. So we, 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 sh- we have the burden by sharing it yeah. and we multiply the gifts by sharing them. So when we only show one side of it, we don't actually get the full depth of that experience. Mm-hmm. Um, so when we have those dark moments, instead of hiding from them, allowing ourselves to feel them to the degree that it feels safe. And as a 9-11 survivor, like yeah. we'll talk about this later, um, there were many ways that it didn't feel safe for me for a long time to feel emotion. Um, you know, it felt safer to just um, push through them, all those sort of things. So I'm not, I'm not saying you necessarily have to be at the level where you like feel everything. Yeah. Like, if it doesn't feel safe yet, that's okay. But allowing ourselves to feel a little bit more as opposed to pushing ourselves to feel numb. So true. Is going to allow for us to get this wider range of um, of flavors in life, right? If you will, right? That bitterness, the, the sourness that we experience, right? And yeah, there some people run away from that. The truth is that a chef never runs away from those ingredients. What really makes a chef's food tastes so much better than what most people cook at home yeah. is this understanding of contrast of this this use of balance right this so it's not just about like you know acting like everything's syrupy sweet and like you know completely like rich it's it's using acidity to cut a little bit of that fat or that that richness to create balance. I love this analogy it, this is great I guess it's great yeah. <laughs> Like, and, and what happens as a result is it wakens our palate. It, it brightens everything. Everything tastes more amplified, right? And as a result, the, the sweetness, the richness, the good that life gives us yeah. is, is even better when we allow ourselves to not just numb and to not feel the stuff that feels uncomfortable. Um, and so when we have those dark moments, right? Um, an, another time that I felt really distraught was when I was I was burned out right and I had lost my hair I was you know I I I had um pain literally from head to toe I couldn't I couldn't walk and stand on my feet anymore so I couldn't I know I couldn't be a chef my career was ending I Ah. I felt another level of despair and one of the restaurants I served at the time was uh the cafe at 9-11 memorial and museum and I what year was this oh gosh this was 2017 okay um, and I was, you know, it was one of my last times there. I knew I was going to leave. I knew, I knew it was time for this new start. Um, and I passed by the memorial on my way out, right? I passed by, um, and, and for anyone who hasn't been there, Jill, I'm sure you've been there before. It's it, when you go there, it's just <laughs> these two dark, deep holes. Mm-hmm. I've been. Right? <laughs> uh, and and when you look into them, right, there's this water that's like flowing into them. So there's this like movement down, right? Like into the darkness, into the deepness. And I look down <laughs> and, you know, like, especially as a 9-11 survivor, I felt, I was like, yeah, this is how I feel. I feel like deep down in this ah. dark, exactly how I felt in that moment. And um, it happened to be just at that time, right? I, there was a tour passing by, right? As there will be in, in New York City. Um, and I heard somebody ask, like, why is it so deep? Why is it so, you know, uh, one of the one of the attendees mm-hmm. was asking the tour guide, like, why is it so deep? And basically the, the tour guide explained that the hole has to be that deep because for the for a skyscraper to stand that high, it needs a foundation that deep. Ah. And so instantly like this light bulb went off in my mind and I was like, wait a minute, what if this depth that I feel, what if this yeah. dark, this like this hole that I feel like I'm in that I don't feel like I can climb out of, what if I'm here, not because I'm about to be buried, but because I've been planted? Yeah. What if I'm here because I need a foundation this deep so that I can soar that high? And I, I believe that when we look at our pain in this in this different light, once we once we allow ourselves to release some of the emotion of it, and really look at our pain as a driving force for positive change. That that is where we start to we start to allow ourselves not to get stuck there, but we start to climb out one foot after the other, and with with that purpose, with the knowing, like I'm not I'm not I'm not here I'm not down here to stay down here I'm down here to build. 
I'm down here to build higher than I've ever built before, to be a beacon as a skyscraper, as the World Trade Center was, right? Uh, to be a light for others. That is what I believe is, is possible for us. And so when we when we don't just take pain as something that we're we need to numb and look at it as, okay, why am I going through this? What is this teaching me? How can I grow as a result of this? You know, I mean, when I when I felt suicidal, when I felt like I didn't know how to continue, uh, when my when my ex told me he wanted a divorce and I realized he was serious and I felt like my life was ending, there was a part of my life that was ending, but it was so that I could have a new beginning. Um, and it allowed for me to really say, okay, what if this could be the very best thing that ever happened to me? What if I could grow from this and this could just be the catalyst of this, this joyous, amazing life? And I will say I'm not I'm not totally out yet. I haven't built the whole skyscraper yet, but if I'm not going that way. And to see where I've been, to see where I am, to see how happy my daughter is, to see how, you know, like how much my life has just changed fundamentally like with those relationships the connections like all these different things like I do have this strong foundation and I know that what I'm building on put on top of is solid and I know that that is exactly where I'm going and and I I just hope that you want to come along for the ride you know so whether it's following on social media um following along for the rest of these stories um you know checking out my website like this ride is going to be epic and Wherever you are, however deep it is, let's let's come together. Let's pull ourselves together. Let's get let's get out. Let's move forward. Let's build the skyscraper of our dreams. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And really, to find that greater purpose through struggle, Diana. Thank you for sharing this today. And we're just about out of time, but I also want to make sure everyone can contact you. Um, also, uh, manifest your dreams. Just tell us quickly about uh, where we can find your work. Yeah. So the Manifest Your Dreams journal is available on Amazon. The easiest way to find it, because those keywords are common, is actually to look up my name, Diana Bejasa. So D-I-A-N-A-B-E-J-A-S-A. -A -A. If you look me up on Amazon, you'll be able to find my journal. Um, it's a system that I, that I use um, for really busy people who want to manifest their dreams, but don't feel like they have a time. It's full of, it's basically structured around science-backed strategies for helping us achieve transformation. And it's absolutely part of what I did in those moments where I was overwhelmed and didn't feel like I could get out. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Thank you. Well, pleasure to have you here again and looking forward to the next time we connect. Again, reach out to her. Look for her on Facebook, Instagram, everywhere. And again, thanks so much for being here. We appreciate your time. Thanks, Jill. Until Thank next you. Time. You got it. Until then. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.